How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to share with you five incredibly easy mistakes that you can make in Python, especially if you are new to programming. The first one has to do with the built-in round function. Most people who are new to programming will try to apply everything they learned in mathematics or from primary school to the world of programming. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as that. And with that mentality, a lot of your programs will face some nasty bugs and behavior eventually. So what we're going to be doing is using the round function to round 1.5 and 2.5. And when we run this, what we're going to get as an output is two and two. Round uses the IEEE standard for rounding, which is round two even, also known as banker's rounding. That means that anytime you run into a number that has an even split, or that ends with 0.5, it will always round towards the closest even number. So one will be rounded to two and 2.5 will be rounded to two. Now, if we change this to 3.5 and 4.5, we're going to get the same thing. 3.5 will be rounded to four and 4.5 will be rounded to four. What's important to remember is that computers are built differently than humans. In mathematics, you would expect 0.1 plus 0.2 to return 0.3. But computers work differently. So the key here is to remember that we're working with computers. Always double check the documentation for whatever function you're using if precision is important to you. Assumptions are going to cost you dearly here. Not everything will transfer from the real world into the world of computers. Moving on to mistake number two. And for this example, we're going to create a generator. And this generator is going to generate numbers from the range of zero to 10,000. And before we can use the generator, we must start the generator. Then below, we can start generating some numbers. And when we run this, we should get zero and one as an output. Those are the first two numbers that we retrieved from the generator. And this makes sense. That's how a generator works. Now, one thing you might be wondering is whether you can perform membership tests on generators. So here we can try to check whether 6,000 is in the numbers. And surprisingly, this will work, which in my opinion shouldn't be the case because you shouldn't be able to check whether a value is in a generator which has not been generated just yet. Anyway, it works, but it comes at a cost. The next time we use next and print the numbers, you'll notice that it's going to start from 6,000 because funny enough, to check whether 6,000 is in the numbers, it has to generate all the numbers until it can find that element. And that's the silliest thing you can ever do to a generator. Now we loaded 6,000 numbers into memory just to check whether one existed. And the worst part is, if you try to search for an element that doesn't exist in that generator, it's going to consume the entire generator looking for it. Which means the next time we try to print the next number, we're going to get a stop iteration error because the generator is now empty. And that's why we never perform membership checks on generators. We should always extract the values first and then check, but never check directly inside the generator. Up next, we have mistake number three. And for this example, I'm going to create a name of type string and that's going to equal Bob. Then I'm going to print that my name is name. And as an output, we should get that my name is Bob. Next, we're going to create a list of string and this list will contain Ben, James, and Sandra. And right below, we're going to type in for name in names, print name. And now when we run this, we should get all of those names as an output. Next, right below it, we're going to print that my name is name because theoretically my name should still be Bob. But when we run this, what you'll notice is that my name is now Sandra. That's right, the temporary variable name that you are using inside a for loop isn't really temporary. Python assigns each value in the for loop to that variable, and that variable continues to exist afterwards. And that's why you need to be careful with the name that you use inside a for loop, because this ends up creating a whole new variable, which can then be accessed outside of the for loop. And that ended up overriding our name. Moving on to mistake number three. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes that I see beginners make in Python. So here we're going to start off by creating a variable named a, and that's going to contain the values of one, two, and three. 
right below, I'm going to create a variable named b, and that's going to contain integers as well. And this is going to be a copy of a. Then right below, we will type in b.append, and then append 999 to b. And finally, we will print both of the lists. And as an output, what we'll notice is that both of them contain 999, even if we thought we created a copy here. The reality is that we did not create a copy here. All we did is create a reference to A. So you can kind of look at B as an alias. Everything we do to B will also be applied to A. Now, the easiest way to fix this is to make a shallow copy. And we can do that by directly using the copy method on A. And that's going to fix our problem. Now we actually have a copy of A. And for most cases, this is going to be enough. But let's take this all a step further. Now A is going to contain a list of integers. As you can see here, the first list contains one and two, and the second one contains three and four. Now below, we're going to create a copy of this and assign it to B. But this time, what we're going to do is change the first element inside the first list. And to do that, we need to refer to B at the index of zero at the index of zero. And that's going to equal 999. Now, when we run this, we're going to end up with two lists that contain the exact same elements. Even if we only referred to B and we used a copy, it still affected both of the lists. And this is because we created a shallow copy, which is quite efficient and good for most cases. Now, in the case you want every single element to be fully copied, we need to import from copy the deep copy method. And now what we can do here is deep copy A. And funny enough, this syntax is completely wrong. I just wrote it as I would in English. It should be from copy import deep copy. Now, the next time we run this, the results will be different. Deep copy ensures that everything inside the list is fully copied. Just be aware that deep copies are far more expensive than regular copies and consume more memory. So only use deep copy when it's absolutely necessary. And finally, we have the last mistake of the day. And I accidentally made this mistake quite recently when I was trying to teach something in one of my lessons. Because oftentimes when I'm teaching, I have to ignore a lot of good practices to teach a concept. And funny enough, that ends up biting me sometimes. Anyway, here we're going to get started by creating our if name is equal to main check. If name equals main, run this code. And the first thing we'll do inside here is create a name, which will equal Bob. And what I want to do with this name is get back the length of this name. And just for the sake of the example, I'm not going to use the built-in length function, but I'm going to create a dedicated function that does that for me. So here we'll type in def get length, and then we're going to provide a name of type string, and that's going to equal, or it's not going to equal, it's going to return an integer. Then we're going to print that the name is length of name characters long. And at the bottom, we're going to return the length of the name. Next, down below, we can print the f string of get length and pass in the name. Now, when we run this, what we're going to get as an output is that Bob is three characters long. And then it returns the result as an integer. And so far, everything's working perfectly here. But next, we're going to copy this. And instead of passing in the name, we're going to pass in James. And when we run this the next time, we're going to get back that Bob is five characters long, and it's going to return to us a result of three. Now that's something to be worried about. And here I'm trying to demonstrate two problems. One is name shadowing, and the other is creating unnecessary dependencies. Because right now we accidentally created a dependency for this function. Without this name, this function will not work. As you can see, when we remove it, we're going to get a lot of syntax highlighting. And I misspelled this on purpose because this actually happened to me recently and it wasn't as obvious as this. Name with two E's is quite easy to catch, but some words are very easy to misspell. And unfortunately that happened to me recently. So I had a huge mix of variable names inside my function, which all depended on a global variable such as Bob. So to fix that, we can obviously just fix the typo 
and the code will work the same way. Except this time, it will give us the proper results, because we did not make any typos there. But now comes the problem of name shadowing. Here we created a name in the global scope. Do not be fooled by the if name is equal to main check. All the code you write inside here is still in the global scope, which means it's very easy to shadow information. Right now, this function over here will work with the parameter and without the parameter, which is a terrible thing. Because once again, this function will now be fully dependent on this variable. And that means that if we make some typos in here somewhere, such as number, which is supposed to be name, this function will still work because it relies on this dependency. So if we were to print get length and pass in the name, here we would think that everything's working perfectly. But once again, as soon as we pass in a name such as James, we'll see that it doesn't work at all. And in this case, it was quite easy to catch because I only have one function in this script and the name is quite easy to spell. So I will notice this immediately. Now, my suggestion is that you always create a main function for all your scripts because it removes everything out of the global scope or at least all the variables that you can accidentally shadow. So instead of having all of this, we're going to remove that and I'm going to use my shortcut if main and that's going to create a main entry point which we can enter into if name is equal to main. Again, the benefit of doing this is that it takes all those variables outside of the global scope and that makes it really hard to shadow anything. As you can see, this function won't even run because it doesn't have the required name, which means the only option we have here is to fix it by either changing the parameter name over here or changing something in our code. But it will no longer run magically when we have a random global variable just hanging out somewhere in our script. And I guess I should demonstrate that this works. As you can see, we get the correct data back for each one of these names. So yeah, those were five incredibly easy mistakes to make in Python. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about these mistakes and whether you have any mistakes that you'd like to share. I'm sure a lot of people would love to read about it. Personally, I love to see what other people struggle with because one, I learned something and two, it makes teaching a lot easier for me when I know what people commonly struggle with. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to cover. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.